Question four. Question four. Guidance. Requirement A. Extremely straightforward. Six marks for general discussion. And unforgivable if we don't get nearly six marks here. So in requirement A, he's saying, if you have a choice of policy, so why choose a particular policy? And possibly, of course, companies change policies, as you know. Secondly, thinking again about how that all links up with faithful representation. And finally, comparability. I suspect we could all get a couple of marks by saying why they choose a particular policy. Of course, it might be that they're choosing the one that is most faithful, or maybe again, they are seeking again to maximize profit for something like profit related pay or something like that. So again, so again, so again, I'd say that the directors sometimes may have selfish intentions FIFO in stock valuation or inventory valuation gives you higher profit than average if prices are going up. Maybe they want a higher profit. Faithful representation, just put down the definition and then, def you know, apply it a bit. Faithful representation, remember, it means the information must be complete, neutral, and free from error. And finally, in trying to discuss comparability, remember, comparability is achieved in two ways. You have to think about comparability to the prior year in the same company. And of course, if they change policy, you will get comparability because they'll do a prior period adjustment. And secondly, comparability to other companies. If two retailers of clothing have got similar business models, but one thinks FIFO is right, one thinks the average cost is right, then you won't get comparability. That's just the way it is. Requirement B is in two parts. The first thing that we're asked to do, probably for three marks, is explain return on equity and its component parts. So we've got return on equity. You're told the return on equity is a multiple of profit margin, then sales over assets, so that's asset turnover, and then finally, assets over equity. It's a sort of measure of gearing. It tells you how much of the assets are financed by equity again, as opposed to debt. So it's a sort of measure of gearing. Once you've got that, again, actually to explain these would be okay, wouldn't it? Return on equity is the rate of return to investors. Margin is about the profitability of sales. Asset turnover is about the efficiency of use of assets. 
And this final ratio, assets over equity, so how many much of the asset is financed by assets, by equity as opposed to debt. Again, you can see again, so obviously again, it tells you about the proportion of the business that is debt as opposed to equity. In this case, again, the way it works out, it's strictly showing us about the proportion financed by equity. In addition, in part one, they also asked us to calculate using the information in table one. So that would need some calculations, which again, you can see in the answer. To be honest, those cannot possibly go wrong because you've got the information there. So all you're doing is using those figures in table one to get your uh, calculation out again so I would say there are two easy marks for the calculations I think the danger is that you misread the question and then perhaps don't use table one in which case you will very much make a rod for your own back and do something that's not asked for that's the first requirement the second requirement is to look at some transactions that the directors have posted and try and explain how they've impacted on the figures and on the ratios. With those transactions, of course, again, make sure you get down any accounting knowledge. So in terms of the transactions, They talk about the special purpose entity. That takes you back to subsidiaries. It takes you back to the definition of control. And the point is that if you take assets off the balance sheet, you know, wherever you put them, whether you put them in a company or not, it sounds to me like they've set up a company, then they still ought to come back in in some form if you have control of them. So I, in terms of knowledge, you will find in the answer there will be some sort of definition of control. In addition, however you want, so again, so you want to refer to it, this building should be consolidated. So at the end of the day, it should be consolidated. It should be included in the balance sheet what the directors have done is actually wrong. If they consolidate the building, then what's going to go up is the assets. If the assets go up, then, for example, the asset turnover will go down. So there's something about the special purpose entity. You've then got the share buyback, And even if you can't do anything sophisticated, we could still explain the basic double entry. So if you buy back shares, the assets of the business will fall. And also, of course, share capital and reserves would fall. So equity will fall as well. If that's all you can say, it's something. We've then got the issue of debt so in addition we've got the issue of the loan capital when the loan is actually issued of course that would cause the assets to increase the double entry is debit asset cash credit loan liability None of this ratio is bringing liabilities in. We're not asked about the impact on net assets, but just assets. So the only thing that would change in those calculations is the assets would get greater. And finally, maybe you're saying something about the associate. You'd be struggling and you'd be very tired at this stage in the exam. 
but by using the equity accounting. So in terms of using the equity accounting, bringing in the share of profits, that would of course increase the profit and again, the equity. After you've done that, if you had time, he's then saying, if you're looking at the printed answer, that how would this business have been if we reversed those transactions, if we corrected the first one, which was an error, reverse the others to get comparability and like on like. And clearly it would give you different results. In part A, if you did the cal in part one, if you'd done the calculation properly, um, return on equity, I think was a change from 39 to 17, or no, 17 to 39%. If those transactions had not been there, the position would have been different. So he was hoping that you'd do some calculations there as well. That's the end of this debrief.